Hey guys, uh, today I just want to show you how to make this sick growl that I made. Um, it's pretty simple, and uh, yeah, I'll be showing you how I did this. So, as you can see here, I have this huge rack that I made called Growl Rack. I'll show you guys how I made this, but first I'll start with the serum, so it's super simple, just basic shapes, saw wave. Um, you can also just use the default saw wave as well, um, just that, should sound fine. Yeah, and uh, all I did here is I just configured and clicked on pitch bend and set it to 12 and minus 12 so I have ability to pitch it up and down. And then I just automated this, so without, without the growl rack actually, I'll take that off. So let's just get a low note and just mess around with the pitch bend. Um, yeah, that's all you really need to do for that. Um, so basically it's all in post, so, um, let's start with the auto filter and I'll get into the macros later. So, first of all I have an auto filter here, it's, um, what's this thing called again? Uh, uh, bandpass. <laughs> Almost forgot that. Um, and I have this mapped to the macro here, bandpass slash high pass frequency. Um, I also have another high pass later on. And basically what's, what this is doing, actually let me just turn these off first. Basically just adding vowels, so... Mess around with the resonance here. Um, that just gives it sort of a valley sound. So you can already hear it's sort of sound like a growl. Um, yeah, that's the basis of it. And then I have just a plain OTT. You can use X for OTT. Um, I use this because it's easier to tweak. Um, so just a normal OTT. Um, another one. <laughs> Another one. And uh, you can see it's sort of fattening up a little bit. Um, next, to make it even more fat, put a saturator. So phaser, this is a really an important part. Um, it gives the vowel, sort of. So um, I picked a frequency 883, I think it was. You can pick anything, really. Just mess around. I liked 883. I'll stick with that. And then just raise the feedback a little bit. Okay, so we got that. Um, next, I added a vocoder. So this is... Well, I'll just let you see what this does. Can't really describe what that's doing. It's just crunching it up a little bit smoothing it out a little bit as well at the same time uh, just at 24 bands um, enhance it put it on modulator put a bit of unvoiced in there just fattens it up you can mess around with that then I've got the high pass filter here which is being modulated and as you can hear um, it's adding some more vowels so I've got it mapped to this macro and uh, by the way this macro has got some automation on it So that just tightens it up a little bit, cuts out some of the low end. Um, next, I've got two more OTTs. And yeah, I've raised the output a little bit. So it's already starting to sound like a growl. Um, I put an a EQ in there and I just cut out some of the lows because it was just it was pretty crazy. And like going into this uh, next rack, um, they were getting pretty distorted and pretty crazy. So cut some of the lows. I got this rack called Thick Boy. Um, I'm not gonna go in depth. It's a it's a pretty big rack. Um, it's basically just a fat rack. If you have um, a fat rack, or if you if you uh, see Crow's videos, I'll put the link in the description. He's got a video on the fat rack. Um, any fat rack will do. Just it's just saturation basically and uh, compression. So I just put the thickness <laughs> to 127. Made it some made a bit stereo. So then I've got that, and uh, one little touch that I like to do, which is a cool tip, is I put a notch filter in, and I've got this map to notch frequency here. So if you look, I've just got a very simple automation. Um, and this is basically just not doing much, just sweeping a little bit, and uh, just.
by lowering the resonance, you can sort of you can control the level. So the lower the resonance, um, the more effective this is, and the higher, it's pretty much got no effect. So I, somewhere around there, a bit of ear candy it makes it nicer for the listener. Um, got two OTTs again. Basically, I just copied and pasted these ones. Um, output gain, obviously, to make it louder. Um, oh, and before I move on, um, let me just show you the utility over here. You'll hear that there's this huge artifact at the end because of all the OTTs. Yeah, that sound at the end. So what I've done is I've put a utility on, um, and I've taken the gain and I've automated it. I've actually mapped it to a macro here just for simplicity. And I've just got a simple automation basically just muting the sound. So it sounds like this. That sounds a lot better. Um, okay, so pretty much I'm just repeating the process here. Um, I'm going through what I've already done before. So I've got all these OTTs, saturation, phaser, vocoder, um, um, fat rack. Um, and I'm basically just taking it and just doing it again. So it's basically just enhancing the sound. Just repeating this process really fattens it up. So add another phaser, same frequency. Um, I like to do this. I like to match the same frequency just so that I'm not getting like two, just two random frequencies. Um, can't really hear it there, but yeah. So I turn this one pretty far down. You, you can mess with that. That's um, just a taste really. Uh, then I've got an EQ8 here, again, just taking out some of those lows, like, they're just really out of control, and, uh, that's because I'm gonna be putting another Thick Boy right there, um, not all the way up, I, w I mean, obviously, at this point, it's just up to your discretion as what you want to do, but I kept that one sort of in the middle, and a bit of stereo, it's starting to sound really good, and then a sausage fattener. If you guys don't have this, it honestly doesn't matter. It's just a tiny bit of saturation. Pulling back the volume a little bit. Just make making sure that the volume is manageable. Don't want the volume getting out of hand. Um, then I've got this rack I made called Signal Splitter. It's pretty simple. All it does is it just splits the top from the bottom pretty cleanly. It's not EQ, it's multiband dynamic, so it's a lot cleaner. No phase cancellation or anything. Or, you know, any of that messy stuff. Um, I've got a little macro here for the split point. And so basically I split it cleanly. On the bottom end, I've got an ozone imager. Um, you can just use utility, make it mono. Cleans up the low end a little bit. And I have this at 140. Um, top end, I don't have anything. I, I think I just put that on to clean up the low end a little bit. It was getting out of hand. Yeah, it, it does clean up just a little bit. Uh, another saturator just to drive it up and I um, lowered the output just to keep it a bit quieter glue compressor and this is um, a pretty big part actually um, just compressing it a little bit about five decibels I've got soft clip on and I'm driving up the makeup um, that's driving it into the compressor and um, leveling it out and distorting it a little bit anyways that's pretty much it. That is the growl. Once you sort of make a rack like this, I, I would recommend making a rack like this. Um, it's really simple to make growls. All you gotta do is just set the pitch bend, um, sort of get this filter vowel movement going on, and uh, and that's the whole growl. It's just saturation, um, phaser, it's, and it's just from a saw wave. And now what you can do is you can resample this, make it into a wavetable in Serum, um, Lots of possibilities. So anyways, that's how you make a growl from scratch. See you guys.